Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host Kilu Nyasha and engineer Arnel Valle. Tonight I'm really happy and pleased to bring you two of my very favorite sister comrades, Pam Africa and Ramona Africa here from Philadelphia. Um, Pam Africa is the uncompromising coordinator of the uh, International Concerned Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal and she has uh, she is such a mover and shaker it's it's amazing she has managed to uh, take this campaign to free Mumia all over the world and we have with us also Ramona Africa who is the sole survivor of the move, the bombing of the move home in 1985 on Mother's Day uh, by the city of Philadelphia. Uh, she survived, but 11 of her family members did not, including five children who were burned alive. She is also campaigning in behalf of her brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, the Move Nine, one of whom passed away already in prison. They have done 30 years for a crime they did not commit. Welcome to freedom, Thank Pam you. and Mona. I'm Thank so happy you. you're Good here. Good to be here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, why don't we start with you, Pam, and uh, tell us a little about, bit about yourself and why you're here. Well, I just want to talk first about yesterday, a historic lunch that we had. Mm. Oh, that's yourself, yes. my sister Ramona, Yuri Kokiyama, and our Julia Wright. And Richard Wright's daughter, the Richard Wright. Yes, and she's Emery. on tour. Emery Douglas. Right. Yeah. Julia's on tour, um, celebrating her father's 100th centennial. All right. And she's been jet lagged, but she would have been here tonight. I know. Um, she come from France, and she's been touring through Mississippi, where he was born. And uh, she's just been doing a big tour and went up to visit Mumia just right. before she came here and then here. And um, it's just been, you know, a really good you know, it was wonderful seeing her again. Yes, and Emory Douglas, yes, oh, yeah. and a, a luncheon with them, and the youth. And Fred, Fred Jr., Fred, Jr. Fred Hampton Jr., Jr. That's right. That's and right. Jr. of course. JR's. JR's been here a few times. So, And one of our comrades from Philadelphia, Sister Leslie, Leslie Jones, and right from the Guerrilla Movement. Right, mm -hmm. yes. yes, and Emory's daughter. Deborah that's right. Was there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It was. I it was of a wonderful. Lunch. Yeah. Just so special. <laughs> and we got um, a chance to visit. Was it Berkeley Tech? B Tech. Yeah. B Tech. Berkeley yes. Tech. And that was an experience in itself. Youth. Talking to you. Yeah. There. Don Williams was there too. From yes. the Deborah. They teach mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Roger. Roger, yes. who bought us lunch. Yes. yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Roger. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it, was it was very wonderful. historical. It was. It was very for, special. You know, us and the youth. Right. And uh, Mona, talk a little bit about uh, where have you been uh, recently? <laughs> well, I've been all over. Uh, Pam and I were in Detroit and met some really good people there. Detroit is really a blighted city I'm since sure. GM moved out, you know, took a lot of jobs with them. Uh, but there are some good people there. Right. that are really working hard and have been working consistently for years. A brother named Abayomi Azikiwe. Um, we stayed with a sister named Cheryl who took good care of us and showed us around, gave us a little history. All we right. spoke at the uh, African American Museum there. All so, right. Yeah, All right. it was really good. Uh, Pam and I were in Denver. Okay. For the anti DNC. All right. <laughs> yes, the right. Anti. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad some... you didn't get arrested. Uh, yeah. Because, like, yeah. Uh, I think 800 a lot of, got arrested. A lot of people That's got the figure arrested, I recall. Yeah. People. But, you know, everything. And some, uh, 40 journalists mm -hmm. in, a, in addition. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So, but it was really good. We met a lot of really good people. There were a lot of young people. All right. You know. Oh, well, that's so, encouraging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was really good. So we've been getting around. Now we're out here for CR10, Critical Resistance 10. Right. Pam and I were here for the very first Critical Resistance in Berkeley. Right. Uh, yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be good to see how things have progressed and transpired since then because we have a lot of work to do. We sure do. Everything's critical do. right mm -hmm. now. Um, um, for those viewers who may not even know who Mumia Abu-Jamal is, um, let's bring him up to date. Who he is, where he is, and why he's there. Okay, well, we all can talk about that. Mumi is a black political prisoner on death row, accused of killing a white police officer by the name of Daniel Wait. Faulkner right. in 1981. Um, there was a railroad trial. Mumi was shot. The police officer was murdered by someone. And it has been very clear and evident that Mumi was not the shooter. Evidence was pointed to that. Witnesses pointed to that. And uh, Mumi himself was shot and all by someone, apparently it was an officer Faulkner. Um, the, um, there's a worldwide movement, and uh, you know, there was a rush for a trial, and uh, you had police officers um, six weeks after the shooting come up and say, oh yeah, I remember Mumia said I shot the M effort and I hope he dies. And uh, um, that was the quote that I did the last time. Right, it, and, blew uh, it. it got us in trouble. <laughs> right, <almost. laughs> and, uh, that's an M efforts, and uh, you know, um, you know, and, um, and I hope he dies. Uh, but it was pointed out that this came up six weeks after, and uh, no police officer reported Mumia saying that on that night. And you know, um, in fact, just the opposite. They made reports saying that he the quote Negro quote, male made, made no, no comment. comments on right, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they didn't just it's not even that Mumia didn't say it, but they didn't even put it in their reports. Right. Yeah. They didn't just forget it. They wrote something completely different. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And um, there was a doctor by the name of Doctor Carletta and all who stated very clearly that Mumia made no statement and all his lungs was full of blood. He said, you know, and he was there within moments when Mumia was brought in and he was in no condition and all to say anything. He couldn't even, he couldn't speak. And all, um, so, you know, you had a lot of things that was counter what it was that they were saying, the whole scenario, uh, the fact that they say that they didn't take a paraffin test. A paraffin test is when a person fires a gun and a residue be on their hands. Yeah. Mumia, it wasn't like they had run someplace and arrest him. Mumia was right there on the scene. Right. Um, the paraffin test wasn't taken. And, you know, another thing to get by people, because they say police officer... They didn't officer, even seal the crime scene. Right. They said police officer Daniel Faulkner shot Mumia. They never said that, you know, um, the same paraffin test was supposed to have been taken of this man as well. And uh, because this is a crime scene, one person shooting the other to prove that he fired, that he shot Mumia. Right. Even the scenario of how they said it happened where, you know, uh, Mumia supposed to shot Faulkner in the back and then stood over top of him and fired and Faulkner fired up into Mumia. And uh, but it's just like the um, in the case of my family. Officer Ramp and all, you know, was standing six feet above my family, facing my family, and a bullet, he was shot in the back of the head and the bullet traveled down. Impossible for my family to have done that. And uh, in the case with Mumia... And you're talking about the Move 9. The Move 9, mm -hmm. yes. And with Mumia, they say that, you know, Mumia stood over Faulkner, Faulkner fired up into him, but the bullet that goes in Mumia is traveling yeah. downward. And all, uh, you know, so... Trajectory was completely the opposite. Opposite. Mm -hmm. And then um, last year or the year before, and uh, a photographer by the name of Kolokoff, and uh, who was on the scene that night and took pictures of the crime scene, um, clearly shows that things happened completely different because they said Mumia stood over top of Faulkner and kept firing 
down at Faulkner's. Right. And Faulkner kept ducking from one side to the other, and the bullets was hitting the ground. But when you see the crime scene, and this man, uh, Paul Clark, told us that he had actually turned the crime scene pictures over to the police. And uh, because the way they had wrote the story in the paper and he read it the following day, it was as if Mumia was the person who shot. So he's turning evidence over to the police, which they never used. A man from Germany happened to be looking at a website and he saw this picture of a um, police officer holding the gun and uh, a gun. And on it looked to him like it was two, so he had it blown up. And he did. No gloves on his hands. And are holding two guns in his hand, Faulkner's and the one that they say is, was Mumia's, right? This man testified in court and all uh, that he was on the scenes and he handled the guns properly. And all uh, because the thing was, they were saying that Mumi, there was no fingerprints on Mumia's gun. So there had to be some fingerprints on there. The fingerprints of the um, police officer would have had to have been on there. So it shows that they wiped the gun clean themselves. Also, they stated that Faulkner was killed, um, the ballistics report, and all from the uh, coroner. And on, you know, they paid, they know their business. And all that a, that the gun that killed, the bullet that killed Faulkner was a 44. He wrote it down. Right. And Mumia's gun caliber was a 38. 38 right. And also, you know, um, then of course, when it was changed, it was changed by the um the FOP when it went to the police they the changed order it. Fraternal police. order police, mm -hmm. yes. They changed the uh trajectory. Well a worldwide movement and all uh, evolved, you right. know, uh, from you know, from this uh um, national let me interrupt you right there, Pam Africa, and invite our viewers to call in if they have any questions. You can call four one five six two one four four seven three and proceed. Yes. Um, but you know, it, it was a worldwide movement that was developed, and um, people from Britain. Well, I remember European 51 parliament. members of the British Parliament, uh, okay. some like 70 some members of the Danish Parliament, the African uh, Union, yeah, uh, several heads of state, yes, including Mitterrand, I believe, Mitterrand. of France, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Nelson a Mandela, Bishop Tutu. Yes. I mean. In fact, let me tell you something about the World Bishop Council Desmond of Churches. Tutu. He went to visit Mumia this year, oh. and he was shocked to find out that a man that's on death row, where you have to go through the prison, and you go through so many doors, and then, you know, the uh, death row section is a section that's off to itself, and you can't touch Mumia at all. They're you come through glass. a glass screen. When you come there, he's shackled at his feet and his hands. Bishop Desmond they still shackled him. No more. When Bishop Desmond Tutu came in, he saw that. He spoke out about it. Oh. And uh, you know, and what year that, was that? That was this year. Oh. This is the first year. You know, and um, you know, one of the things that you know you wind up, you see him so many years with the shackles on, and uh, that when the shackles was off, we didn't notice it until he said it. Wow. You know. That you know, you're just so used to seeing it, and he mm -hmm. was talking with his hands and things, you know, Aww. and he was doing like right. this. But oh, you know, nice. the mind. Yeah. You know, you're so used to seeing that, so he's not no longer shackled. Not only him, it was the other prisoners too. Because oh, what's you know what happens right to Mumia, it goes all the way across. Right the on, board. right on. It becomes a class thing, a class right. action kind of thing. Yeah. Um, right. I want to bring Mona in mm -hmm. uh, okay. because Mona, I really want you to talk about. The incident of August uh, 1978. I don't remember the exact date. August 8th. August 8th. Right. Please talk about that. Um, what had happened is Move People had been confronting the system for years. I mean, on all levels, on so many issues. And the government didn't like it. And so they tried to soft soap first, tried to offer move money, called funding, uh, an office, you know, all this kind of stuff, and move didn't want any parts of it. Uh, so when they saw they couldn't buy move all, they came with the brutality and intimidation and uh, began beating move people up, locking move people up, beating pregnant move women into miscarriage. And um, move people took a stand and said, listen, 
we are a peaceful people. We are uncompromisingly opposed to violence, but we are not stupid, nor are we confused. We understand the difference between violence and self-defense. And um, MOVE took a strong stand. There was a year-long standoff between MOVE and this system. You know, they claim they had warrants to arrest several MOVE people, and uh, MOVE people took a stand. Uh, finally, the government was backed off. You know, they uh, took down the barricade they had around MOVE. They were supposed to drop all the charges against MOVE. But because the mayor at the time was a well-known racist named uh, Frank Rizzo. Oh, I remember him. He was, you know, outraged that he had to give ground because his statement in the beginning was that he did not negotiate with terrorists. Oh. And he was forced so to So you were back terrorists. Off. Yes, oh. according to him. Right. So he was forced to back off and he was mad. You know, and basically he wanted revenge and they wanted to just exterminate MOVE. So on August 8th, hundreds of cops came out to our home under the guise of uh, MOVE being evicted, that we were supposed to leave our home and we were still there. So they were coming to get us out of the house, which was a lie. They came out there to kill, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they attacked our home with deluge hoses, with tear gas, and with thousands of rounds of bullets. Uh, when the smoke cleared, move people were still alive. Uh, also, when the smoke cleared, one police officer was fatally shot, and several other cops and firefighters were injured. Now, their position was that move people killed this cop. Nine people can't fire one bullet that kills one cop. They immediately destroyed MOVE headquarters and put our nine sisters and brothers in jail, tried them, convicted nine people of shooting this one cop to death. Each were given 30 to 100 years. At the end of the trial, the judge stated, you know, to a question that he had no idea, didn't have the faintest idea of who, who killed, killed the cop. cop. I, I'll never forget that. I couldn't people. believe it. Mumia is and the one we just that came up. We're, we're getting uh, very close right. to the time limit, and uh, I just remember that uh, it was unbelievable that he could say that he didn't know. And then when they came up for, for parole just this year, right after 30 years, 30 they years, denied him parole because they, they refused to admit to something they, they didn't did do. do. They did the same thing with Geronimo G. Jaga, oh, yeah. also known as Pratt. Right. Mm -hmm. Every time he went to the board for 27 years, that's right. You, you're showing no remorse, so you're denied. How can I and show re remorse if I didn't? If I'm innocent, right. I can't show remorse for something I did not Those do. Those are the it's two things that these parole boards across the country have to be dealt with about them denying people because one, you won't say you're guilty of something you didn't do. And two, they say the serious nature of the offense, which has absolutely nothing to do with parole. I know. It's, it, it's just amazing. I, I just couldn't believe that they would deny them. Yeah. 30 years, for, and they know they didn't do anything. Absolutely. Um, Mona, uh, you're wearing a short sleeve T-shirt, mm -hmm. and you proudly bear the scars of yeah. that. Yeah. And I just wanted you to show your arm yeah. on TV oh, yeah. of that horrible fire yeah. that you endured and uh, explain to our viewers please Mona that when they bombed your house and also allowed 60 what is it, 61 row houses to burn to the ground That's Philadelphia right. those old brownstones right That's solid right. houses that people black people owned for oh, yeah long long yeah. time yeah. whole block the fire department and the police department just stood by and let them burn Made to the ground. Made a conscious decision. It was in, it to was let unbelievable. It burn. Now, with men, women, babies, and animals in that house, they said they had warrants for four people. They knew there were other people in the house, especially children, that they had just allowed back into the house that morning knowing wow. what they were getting ready to do. Wow. So it is clear that And every that time you tried to come out, I understand they, they fired on you. They opened fire on us. They opened fire on us. Their intent was to kill, not to arrest.
And so we it was the that. Mother's Day Massacre. Yes, it 1985. was. 1985. I will never was. forget that. Yeah. Um, we are only, we're running out of time. Pam, please, uh, uh, last words from you and last words from Mona. Um, I would like people to really visit the uh, website of abujamalnews.com. Um, you can go there and get all the updated information. You can also Google and uh, frame the execution, um, all the different um, videos and all that show the innocence of Mumia. Right. Um, you can go to prisonradio.org. No, prisonradio.com, I think. Right. And you can get all his commentaries, commentaries live. Yes. You know, you can listen and to it. And it also links you to the um, other sites. And with Move, the um, I think his um, the August eighth confrontation. Move May 13th. blog. Uh, parole. Uh, move nine parole. Blog spot. Move nine number nine. Yes. Move nine, nine parole. parole. Blogspot. Blogspot.com. Dot com. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And um, there are you can just Google Mumia Abu Jamal and you're going to come up with lots of. Mm -hmm. of information and websites and um, Pam yes. and Mona uh, <laughs> you guys you just you just amaze me oh, and tomorrow we're doing um, a, a workshop, workshop on, on Move 9, nine at oh, oh, you, you have uh, a second to say it where yeah. uh, it's yeah. from 2 to 3 30 um, Laney, at Laney, Laney College, Laney College, and that's in Oakland. Right. And uh, we're clean out of time. Thank you so very <laughs> Thank much, you, Mona and Pam he Africa, and for joining us on Freedom Is a Constant Struggle. Thank um, Arnel Valle Arnel. for his board opting. <laughs> He's the best. And uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. And please tune in next Friday for uh, Freedom Is a Constant Struggle. And in the meantime, uh, go to the benefit for the San Francisco. Go yeah, oh yeah. at uh, the First Congregational Church in Oakland, uh, 14th at Castro. And uh, thank you again. Power to the people. Free Power all people. political prisoners. Long live revolution. All right. Long, Long live, live John Africa. Africa. <laughs>